Welcome to watch this video about the content syncing and device client API library description. This is essentially the core of explaining how simple it is to sync content with the ball and how the API is based on that as well. Uh, I'll be linking this differently uh, uh, separately on the blog as well. There is more thorough documentation on the tool. I'll begin this presentation introducing uh, the ball storage for those who might have not been aware of it. Then, then I show how we can get the tool and use use the tool in some basic way to demonstrate its functionality. So, for the ball structure, let's go back to the same group that we b began with. I'll sing again, sing, sing in with the uh, Yahoo or sign in, not singing here. Uh, and I go to my group. And despite I was supposed to tell a few words about the group ID, everywhere where you see the URLs in the ball, there is a part of the group ID uh, that's identifying the unique group. And when I go to show how it's stored in the Azure, it starts to make kind of simple sense. This is a, a, an additional tool that's simply store, showing my blob storage in Azure, uh, which is kind of a file system with certain limitations, but uh, certain benefits as well, among, uh, among other things, massive scalability on single blobs. So in here I have something like 3a, 1a and, and remainers. In the Azure storage I happen to have exactly the same folder which kind of indicates that we store everything of the group in a like structure that the URL says. And what's the, ball of, uh, what's the power of the ball architecture is that uh, there is asynchronous processing and we pre-render everything. I mean everything is stored uh, as a native currently either in XML, binary or JSON format but also supporting additional formats which means that if I go in here to text content I see those two test articles that I had in their native format whichever it's chosen uh, and then in this case additional JSON format. Same thing for uh, the searches that I briefly mentioned they could be cached or refreshing. Every query request is also stored and then background processed and during the storing it will create the JSON without the results uh, and then it will populate the results in, uh, in by the background processing. And some design elements allow us to pre-calculate the ID based on the query string, which means that it can fetch the results if they were uh, existing already by that query, meanwhile when it's checking back from the background whether it's changed or not. So the Content Sync tool will actually make a secure connection at this level of the storage of the group and then allow syncing in and out the stuff from here. So let's let's proceed with the demo. Uh, there are two ways, two practical ways of getting the tool. One is from the GitHub releases, so they are available in here. I'll keep them up to date with the most recent ones. The practical one for Windows and Visual Studio users is to use the NuGet so I'll actually show how to grab the tool with NuGet here. I created a demo folder for these tests to show out uh, in a pure environment how we get it. So I have NuGet X installed from the NuGet. You can check out more thoroughly on the documentation of the Content Sync tool. And I'll proceed with NuGet install the ball device client pre-release and it will fetch me 
the ball client and its uh, requirements as well. This is the same package that will be used on the API. I mean, uh, when the the client is used as an API library, which I will demonstrate in the follow-up videos. I'll go to this uh, folder, including tools, and I can find a content sync tool in here. It has some basic uh, help on what commands it supports. So then I'll uh, I'll go and establish the connection with that group. So I use the create connection command, and it's it says that it needs the group ID, host name, and the connection name. So I'll use it in a way. I name a demo connection. Then my host name is dev dev the ball me, and the group ID is the one that identifies the group. So I'll grab it from here. And it needs to be still have the argument tag in it. Like that. It should show, yes, it shows the uh, negotiation time from the client just to give the kind of OK notification. And from this side we can then use uh, list connections command to show that it actually has uh, recognized the, the connection in here. Now good thing to remember is I also underlined it here. Remember to email confirm the joining because the client itself it did the secure negotiations but it needs to be confirmed by the group owner that it was okay for this device to join in the group. And it's interesting, I've experienced with the Yahoo, the original message came to my inbox as normal, but for some reason the device joinings appear to come into the spam. So uh, I'll deck it, toggle it not spam to show it on my on my um, inbox. And here it says basically uh, it requires my confirmation to join with the group with this ID and the connection from tool with name demo connection which is what I just created. And I click on here to validate the device joining. If everything goes fine I can see my device under the devices here and it shows uh, it's validated true. It's by the way visible already here before I validate the email then this validated is false. Okay so now we are kind of happy with the create connection then let's set staging folder to the group and I'll do it with the set staging command So it will be content sync tool and I go a bit lower. I'll make my staging folder here. And go in and then I refer to the actual tool through here. So I'll do the set staging command here which will require a connection name then part to the local stage folder and data filters which will it will be fetching. So I'll be giving the demo connection name to that. I'll attach this folder and uh, I'll have the data folders something like Aldo Global Impact.oip like that. And I'll confirm that it works by simply listing connections again. So it has set staging from this folder and uh, it lists the data folders as well. So then I will do the following command to confirm that it works. I'll uh, do the staging op, stage op, 
command which allows me to, with the certain connection, get data. And I can also say put dev, but I won't say it right now. Uh, let's get first the data and see that it's actually getting something. It's first getting the MD5, MD5 hash for local files, and then when it found none, it simply copied everything over. So now I have a folder out of globalimpact.oip here. If I run the command again, it's calculating the MD5s for local files first, and then because nothing is different, it's, uh, it's not getting anything. Now let's make uh, one staging folder for the development first demo and do something, put some content in, something like hello demo txt, hello from video demo by content sync tool. I save, exit, confirm that it's here. And then I do the same stage up, but with put dev as well. And now it uploaded the, my demo into the, the ball side. So let's see then where it got. I'm getting back to the Azure storage for this. I'll refresh that level. We start to see something new. Well, this was here before, but it's also including uh, something like device membership, which has the device specific inputs, where it actually technically puts it first. So here we can see the first demo from the device perspective and hello demo text. The device is not that easy to track down. It's supposed to be kind of independent and separate, so it's easier to go to the root level and see that it's copying over the dev first demo in and also in here we have the hello demo text which then also means that if we go to the browser side and don't make much typos in here let's be accurate first demo and uh, hello demo text we can confirm that also our website side is seeing this content So we actually validated from the Azure storage and validated with browser that everything is in. In the follow-up videos I'll show how we start the cross-platform dialogue with devices and, uh, and start building a web app that actually starts to modify the data as with the initial functionality tests.